I'm Kamal Tukodra. I'm a technical marketing engineer in the Ruby Switching Business Unit. Today in this 10.10 update, I'm going to talk to you about parity features and enhancements in 10.10. In this agenda, we're going to cover IP lockdown, ND snooping, SmartLink, DHCP relay, Auto VLAN, RPVST scale, and unsupported transceiver mode. IP lockdown feature parity. In this enhancement, we bring dynamic IP lockdown, both V4 and V6, to the 6000, 6100, 4100i, and the 8360. Just a reminder that IP lockdown is used to prevent IP source address spoofing. And when the dynamic IP lockdown is enabled, IP traffic received on a port is only forwarded when we have port matches based on the IP binding table. And just as a reminder, so all the platforms supported are the 8400, 6400, 6300, 6200, and now we also can include the 8360, 6100, 6000, and the 4100i. And here is a quick reminder of the basic configuration. On a port, you just take the IP uh, interface and put the IPv4 source lockdown if it's IP4 lockdown, or IPv6 source lockdown if it's IPv6 also can be configured on lag interfaces and you can do a show IP v4 depending on the version to see where you've got source lockdown enabled. The snooping feature parity. 10.10 10 introduces ND snooping to the 8360. So now supported platforms are the 6400, the 6300, 62 and 8360. Remember that enabling ND snooping feature prevents ND attacks. ND snooping does not just snoop, but also detects attacks by default. So ND snooping drops invalid ND packets and together with dynamic IP lockdown, we block traffic from invalid hosts. Remember ND snooping provides ND guard, so dropping Ethernet source packets that are mismatched. We also have RAs in support of that, so we can do router advertisements as well as router redirects on untrusted ports. And also we can have RAs on um, untrusted and trusted ports, and we can have drops regardless of, of that. Also, please look at the RA guard update feature where we talk about um, policies on RA guard um, in this series for 10.10. .10. So here's a quick configuration. Uh, if you're having any snooping uh, on a port, you just enable it globally and then you put the ND snooping trust um, on the port that you want to enable or allow packets to come on and inspected or if it's on a VLAN context then you actually put it onto the uh, in the VLAN context ND snooping uh, and here's the example where we're using ND snooping on the VLAN and we've got ND guard and RA guard. Smart link feature parity. So SmartLink was introduced to AOS CX in 10.07. 10.10, um, we see SmartLink on both the 6100 and the 6000 platform. I covered this in a lot of detail in 10.07 TOI, and a demo is available on a YouTube or on our ABC networking channel. If you just look, look, search for SmartLink on that, you'll find that. So just to summarize that SmartLink is now supported on the 8360, 6400, 6300, 6200, 
and now on the 6106,000. So just to quickly review, SmartLink provides effective, simple and fast convergence link redundancy in network topologies where we got have dual links between different layers of network, operates at layer two, it's rapid failover and it can be faster than spanning tree. Our design goal is to be less than two seconds. Interoperates with AOS switch and Comware. So the benefits are it's loop free connections with dual uplinks. We can see on the access layer here, uh, we have a primary and secondary link. So the primary is active and the secondary is blocked. We have rapid failover. Both links can actually be used. So we can put half of the VLANs up one link and half the VLANs up another. And it's relatively simple to configure. Just a bit more detail that I've taken from the 10.7 TOI to explain a bit more around SmartLink and its configuration. So obviously we have to define some VLANs. Then we have to have our VLANs that are going on our trunk, which includes our control VLANs. Um, and then we define our SmartLink groups and associate the VLANs with that SmartLink group. And then we have some load sharing because we've got two groups. Remember, we also need a smart link control VLAN for flushing off packets. But if you want more details, please look at our 10.07 TOI, which is available on our ABC networking channel. DHCP relay feature parity. 10.10 .10 introduces DHCP relay for 6100 and 6000. Allows forwarding of DHCP requests from the local switch now. So now all CX platforms as of 10.10 .10 support DHCP relay. Um, and again, if people are interested in more details, I had, did cover DHCP relay when it was introduced into the 6200. So it's exactly the same for the 6100. So a very quick overview on DHCP. Obviously DHCP relay uniformity now across the whole CX portfolio. Again, we're supporting V4 and V6. V4 is the default mechanism. For V6, you need to explicitly enable that globally. Um, so basically the introduction of the feature allows more competitive and flexible architectures. Um, and we can see that we have two options. So prior to uh, this feature, if you wanted to enable DHCP, the layer three boundary would be upstream and it would be reliant on an upstream router or switch. Uh, which is still a valid configuration. And then with um, this option, we can now bring the layer three boundary down, have DHCP relay given out lo locally. So some notable caveats, configurations, v V6 multicast helpers not available, but V6 relay is with unicast. Option 82 for uh, identity effectively and protection, uh, snooping takes precedence over Option 82 relay when it, they coexist on the same VLAN. Remember, single default VRF is only available. No routing or layer three uh, routing on a port. It's all SVIs. Remember, no DHCP server, no multicast routing as well. Again, please refer to the ABC networking 6200 DHCP relay if you want some more details around the operation. Auto VLAN feature parity. So 10.10 .10 also introduces auto VLAN to the 4100. So now auto VLAN is supported on 64, 63, 62 and 4100. So this feature allows the creation of VLAN automatically for port access clients in the case where the VLAN is not already statically configured. 
it really comes into its own even though it's a standalone feature when you're using user-based tunneling clients can be onboarded with uh, local user roles download the user roles and a radius vsa and simply the configuration is port access auto vlan rpvst scale feature enhancements So 10.10 .10 increases the supported number of V ports and VLANs for rapid per VLAN spanning tree. So we've got some improvements for the 6,000, 6,100, 4,100, 6,200 and the 6,300. So in this table, you can see in terms of V ports, um, what the existing V port support is for the specific platforms. And for 10.10 .10 for the 6200, we've increased that to 2048 V ports. Now for rapid per VLAN spanning tree VLANs, there's been an increase across the board for these platforms. So you can see uh, what it was before for 10.09, for 10.10, .10, we have had an increase for the 6,600 and 4,100 to 32 VLANs. 6,200 is increased from 32 to 128. And the 6,300 has gone from 252 to 512 VLANs. Just wanted to clarify uh, what a V port was as well. So a V port is an effectively an active spanning tree VLANs that are declared on the an interface, and these are VLANs that are processing VPDUs, which has an impact on switch resources. So if we look at this topology here, we have this core switch. It's actually got three VLANs per link. And we can see this in the configuration. If we look at link 111, it's got one native and VLANs 10 and 11. So that's three active VLANs and all the ports are configured the same. So that's three, six, nine, twelve. So that makes twelve active V ports. Um, and this is where we need to make considerations on capacity when V ports start coming up, typically on core aggregation switches. And and just just for information, again, these switches. Uh, this is not necessarily an ideal topology because they've all got one link but um, these this one link to this core has three VLANs so each of these switches have three V ports on them but really you want to be looking at issues of V ports increasing in typically the core aggregation so that's really a summary of V ports so just to finish off on the V ports and VLANs, if you want to check the number of VLANs and V ports supported on a switch, you can just do a show capacities RPVST and we can get the number of VLANs configurable on the system as well as the number of V ports supported. And then if you want to uh, check in an active switch, um, so while well, it's live, you can see do a show capacities capacity status RPVST, and we bring up the uh, maximum and uh, number of V ports and VLAN supported respectively, and then you can see on that specific device how many VLANs and V ports are uh, are active. Unsupported transceiver mode for 10.10. .10. So unsupported transceiver mode up to 100 gig. So 10.10 .10 allows up to 100 gig depending on the platform we have in front of us. 
just to remind in 10.9002 we did allow up to 100 gig on the 8360 8325 and the 10,000 and here's a full summary table below so we all know that we do support 1 gig to 10 gig as of 10.05.001 apart from the 6000 which only has 1 gig ports anyway. Then uh, up to 100 gig was supported on the 8360, 8325 and the 10k from 10.09.002 and now we've introduced um, the 6300 from 1 gig to 50 gig. 8320 from 1 gig to 40 gig and 6400s and 8400s from 1 gig up to 100 gig. So just wanted to do a quick review around unsupported transceiver mode. Um, some salient points are that obviously UTM is unsupported transceiver mode. It's on by default on our switches. Um, apart from very older software. So it allows third party transceivers and DACs to be operated on our platforms. The caveat is that there's no guarantee or warranty for operation of these third party optics. It's always on a best effort basis. And the risk is with um, customers who want to take that path. Third party optics are any that are not listed formally on our data sheets so recommendation is to use them for migration and cutovers and initial validation but our best practice and formal support and operation we recommend using aruba supported transceivers on a per platform basis So I just wanted to give a few outputs from uh, our newly supported platforms in this mode. So here I've got a 6300 with a 25 gig DAC. So I've just run the show interface with the transceiver keyword. We get this asterisk that, that shows us that this is an unsupported transceiver. And then we can add the keyword uh, transceiver, D, the keyword detail on that previous command and we get some more details that it says this is a plug or module that's not fully supported on this interface but it's allowed to be used in this allow unsupported transceiver mode so similarly for unsupported transceiver mode i've got an 8325 with a 40 gig QSFP from uh, another vendor and we can see i've run that same command with the keyword transceiver and we pick up the asterisk, which means it's an unsupported transceiver. Then I've added the keyword detail. And again, we get more, more details, but we also get the text to show that it's not a fully supported interface, but is allowed in the unsupported transceiver mode. Thank you for taking the time to watch this update on Aruba CX 10.10. .10. I hope this was informative and useful for you.